Crikey, that bloke's noisy. I got a joke for you. What's the difference between an onion and a banjo? The difference is nobody cries when you cut up a banjo. We'll get on to the topic of discussion for today. <sighs> He's at it again. Ah, oh, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today's video is the second in the series about biochar. And today we'll be talking about collecting the water and using the water to quench the char. And also we will be talking about crushing the char and why I think it's necessary and how you can go about it. We collect all our water off the roof for quenching our char. We don't have town water. And if I did, I would use this method in preference because town water often has contaminants such as fluoride and chlorine etc and I don't want to contaminate my char with any of that sort of stuff having said that there are going to be people who have just got town water and that's that I guess they'd have to figure out some way to filter it if they thought that was an issue you may not think it's an issue and that's up to you you would need to do some research on all that anyway as I said we use water collected off the roof you can see what sort of a system we use we just bring up shuttles with the loader and place them in place let them fill up with the rain water and then we take them away and use them i realize that in town a lot of people won't be able to do this they won't have a loader and they won't have thousand litre shuttles but they could use smaller drums and I'd assume being in town they would be making much smaller amounts than me. The other thing you could do if you don't have any way to move the water, you could set up your whole operation within a hose length of a building and put a tank off the side of the building, like a shed, etc. And after you make your char, just simply turn the hose on, fill the drum up with water, and you don't need to move the water at all. Another question is, why do you need to put it out with water at all? Why not just restrict the air into there and it will go out because of lack of air? You can do that. However, it is actually beneficial to stop the process when you have it alight and the water helps to break up the cellular structure of the charcoal. And some people even say it helps activate it. If nothing else, it makes it easier to crush it because the cellular structure cracks from the sudden cooling effect of the water. When you come to ch charging the char, I think when it goes through the process of being cooled quickly by water, I think the nutrient you use to charge your char when you've stopped the process with water quickly goes into your char a lot quicker than if the char just goes out from lack of oxygen. Having said all of that, I've got charcoal out in the paddock and it's not biochar probably, not the, not the way I'd define it anyway, but charcoal from stacks of logs we burnt when we originally cleared the land here. And those areas definitely grow way better than the rest of the paddock without the charcoal. The other thing is the feed there seems a lot more palatable. The cows really hammer those areas. I think it's sweeter. I think what eventually happens is that the charcoal does take up nutrient. That is going to have an impact on your growth initially because instead of your nutrients going into your plants to grow, the biochar is soaking them up. But once it all gets established and there's microorganisms and, and all that sort of stuff in the char, then I think you start to see a benefit. By charging it and making the char the correct way, just makes the whole process happen a lot quicker. The other thing I've discovered generally with biochar is the longer you're using it in other words the second and third season quite often produce better results than the first season with it the whole system really needs time to get working properly to have healthy flourishing microbes and water retention all that takes a while to get really working i think we're going to get on now to crushing the char the char that i crush i do in this homemade crusher that i've manufactured myself this is the char in the, in the drum. And you probably see I've thrown in some eggshells and over here I've got some chicken bones. 
And I'm going to crush all that up and we'll talk about why I'm putting the chicken bones and the eggshells in in a while. You'll notice that the char that I've already got in here is in a liquid. It's urine. And we'll also talk about the benefits of that as well. An interesting thing about the urine in the char is that there's no smell whatsoever. Once it's been in there for a while, all the smell goes away. If I had to guess, I would say that's because the charcoal has sucked up anything that creates smell out of it. Most people know that charcoal is a great purifier. Sucks up all the nasties that's in liquid. Anyway, I'll start up this crusher and show you what we do. Here I'm just feeding in some eggshells and you can see what sort of a product you get from doing that. Next we'll try a few chicken bones. Crusher eats them no problem at all. Some char and eggshells combined. This is a chart of what is actually in the average urine. You can see that there's small amounts of a few different things. The sulfate and phosphate are important for us. The largest amount at 2% is urea. And all the other things are fairly low. The only other thing that's of any note is urea, which is handy because it's a source of nitrogen. The idea of using urine in fertilizers is by no means a new idea. If you look up on the internet, something called terra preta which is felt t-e-r-r-a-p-r-e-t-a -E -E you'll find a whole heap of information about how this whole idea of biochar has become rejuvenated it's a really old idea and they practice it in the amazon where the soil apparently was very poor and i'm not really sure whether there's a lot of assumptions being made, of, you know, I don't really know, but the outline basically is that they burnt off the scrub and made charcoal. They made very rough clay pots and peed in them. Then they added that to the charcoal, broke all the pots up and used it as fertilizer. That's a very, very quick rough outline of what it was about. Look it up for yourself. There is a theory that the pots actually help to retain moisture as well. I don't really know if it's all fact or assumption in fact, but it's very interesting and it was how I got started on my experiments and journey with biochar. So if you have a look at that, you probably get a fair idea where I'm coming from. The other thing is eggshells. Why do I put those and bones in? Eggshells are made up of 90% plus calcium carbonate, which is a good source of calcium which does a number of things in your soil one of the things it does is helps to raise your pH we have a pH on the scale of about 5.6 and we'd like to raise it up somewhere around 7 so anything we can get our hands on to add to the char that will help raise the pH is beneficial the char itself also incidentally raises pH if you have soil that's very high pH number I would not use biochar as an amendment. Biochar is already very high on the scale and by adding it you're probably going to exacerbate your problem. So the first thing you probably need to do is do a pH test and make sure you're not making your pH go the wrong way by adding char and calcium etc. I realise that most people are not going to have or want to have a dedicated biochar crushing machine. The reason I built one is because I want to make big quantities and turn it into effective charcoal for our farm. When I first started out doing experiments and making smaller amounts for gardens, etc., I just made this. It's a piece of scrap cut off steel. It's six millimetres thick piece of sheet metal, just mild steel, welded onto a bit of three quarter water pipe and I ram it up and down the bucket and crush the char. So I put a little bit of char and Oh, there's some eggshells in there too, in a bucket, and then I just use it to crush it up.
that little bit's crushed it up fairly well. The thing I didn't like about this method was that I really wanted to make bigger quantities, number one, and also it's not really uniform. I don't think that product's really that good. You can spend more time and get it finer. However, it's a fair bit of work. Another way that some people do it is they put it in something like an old feed sack, you know, one of them nylon sort of ones, put a fair bit in one of those and drive over it several times with their motor car. I tried that, that, yeah, it works, but it's not as good as a machine. Some of the effective cheap ways are to build yourself a small scale biochar crusher. The, and I have got a video about that, how you can go about it, pretty straightforward. And you can power it with something like a, an angle grinder or, you know, it's not rocket science. Or I haven't tried it, but some people say garbage disposal units work quite well. I guess one thing you've got to wonder is why would you even bother crushing it up? Well, I think great big lumps that you get would take forever to penetrate right in. I mean, they would eventually, and I've certainly used it like that. Most of us don't have 10 or 20 years to wait let's all up and working. We want it working ASAP. And by crushing it up certainly speeds up the whole process because whatever you use to charge it goes into the char a lot quicker, of course. And, it's, and I think you want the char big enough to be a little home for all the microbes. So you don't want it down to dust size, I don't think. But you don't, also don't want it huge, you know, like there's got to be a happy medium. Unfortunately, try as much as I can to get accurate information on the perfect size. I haven't been able to find what scientists tell us are the perfect size. I tend to think anywhere down to small as a match head and probably as big as your thumbnail, somewhere in that range, I feel is about the best size. Probably the size of your little fingernail. You know, that sort of size. One thing I didn't talk about was why I put the bones in there. Well, a lot of you are probably aware that you can actually buy blood and bone fertiliser and they are a great source of calcium. The other thing is, is we have to get rid of them somehow and we try and save everything we can to put something back rather than just throw it in the rubbish bin. And for us, it's a good way to turn a negative into a positive. I'm going to wrap this video up at this point. If you watch it and you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. I will be doing another video to finish this series off. It'll go into the rest of the process from where I've left off to planting seeds. Just out of interest, we harvested our carrots out of our garden beds a couple of days ago, and this is what we got. That's about a week carrots for us. And this one here took Pat two days to dig it out. She had a couple of different goes at it, it wouldn't come out. But you can see, here's my forearm. So it's from my little finger, the tip of it's at my little finger, and the other end's nearly down at my elbow. I definitely say they're getting enough nutrient out of the char and fertiliser that we're making. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.